Well, good afternoon and welcome to Current Tech Extension or live from Current Tech Extension. Uh, I wanted to start off by saying that uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We had uh, quite a few issues uh, going live streaming this morning. So now it appears we have it up and running. And um, if you can bear with me, I had this great presentation all set up to go and we're having a lot of problems. So, so I'd like to start off by saying um, my name is Chris Blah and I'm an agriculture technician and Master Gardener Coordinator for the Kirtuck County Extension Office. Uh, we provide programs uh, related to horticulture in the county. Uh, we give uh, presentations at the schools, and um, I, I also coordinate the Master Gardener Program, and they also aid in helping us um, give horticulture research-based information to the community. Um, so today, what we're gonna cover is turf grass. And uh, basically the characteristics of the local grasses that are grown in this area. And, uh, and like I said, forgive me if I forget a few of the things, but uh, I don't have anything to, to kind of go by. And it's kind of off the cuff. I wasn't prepared for this. But uh, we'll start off with warm season grasses today. And uh, with the warm season grasses, which predominantly you're going to find in the coastal plains because of our sandy soils and the extreme heat that we have and the humidity plays a factor. Um, with warm season grasses, you know, you, you, you will get them, they brown out, they go dormant, if you will, in, this, in the winter time, and they turn brown. So a lot of people don't, don't like that, and, and you certainly have a few other options in the coastal plain, but not a whole lot. Um, so that said, we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, Bermuda grass. Uh, Bermuda grass you'll find a lot of times on golf courses. It has a very fine texture. Uh, they use it... Um, You'll, you'll find it in a lot of yards, and a lot of you will know Bermuda grass just by, because it gets into your beds, and it's very annoying. It's, it's very uh, tough grass to keep out of your beds. However, it is extremely wear tolerant, um, and um, it is at high maintenance. It requires two, two cuttings and sometimes more, depending on how much nitrogen you put on, uh, two cuttings per month uh, or per week, excuse me. Um, and... Some of the other grasses we'll, we'll talk about today are going to be zoysia grass, St. Augustine grass, and uh, bahia grass, uh, and centipede grass. So those are, those are going to be the rest of the topics that we're going to cover. Um, the next one I'll go over is going to be St. Augustine grass. St. Augustine is a wider bladed grass. Um, it is the only turf or warm season grass that can be grown in the shade, at, at least in this area. Um, it is less maintenance than Bermuda grass. It has less maintenance requirements, less fertilization requirements. Um, therefore, you don't have to mow it as often. It is a very thick grass, and it's almost like a carpet when you're walking on it. So if you've got a big, heavily shaded or wooded lot, St. Augustine grass is probably what you're going to want to go with. Um, the next grass we'll talk about is centipede. Uh, centipede grass has a moderate salt tolerance. Um, it is not tolerant to many herbicides. So if you if you use herbicides in your beds or in any other places, that might be something that, uh, that, that may pay a factor in your decision making for centipede grass. Um, it can tolerate mild shade, and I say mild, just dappled sunlight. It cannot tolerate heavy shade at all. It will die out slowly or you know, fairly rapidly, actually, in shade. Um, but with centipede grass, it is thicker virgin. Uh, applications per year, somewhere around a half a pound per thousand square feet per, per season. So uh, very little nitrogen requirements uh, and very little maintenance requirements in general. Uh, but you do have some negative effects uh, with salt and different things with uh, centipede grass. Um, the next grass we're going to talk about is zoysia grass. Zoysia grass also has a high salt tolerance and it is um, Zoysia grass is also spread by rhizomes and stolons, as is with Bermuda grass. Um, and that's something I'm going to touch on uh, real quick. I was going to actually touch on it before, and I did not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a little uh, backwards on my presentation right now. Um, but this is a rhizome. And the way I like to remember a, a rhizome is it comes off the root. Um, or not off the root, it actually comes off the stem, but it's, it runs underground, so similar to a root because the roots are underground plants. So your rhizome comes off the root and it shoots off a runner and you'll see all these little, these little blades of grass, that's going to be a new area for grass to come up. That's going to be a new plant in each one of these leaf nodes. And you can see there's several leaf nodes that run along. And 
the one thing about uh, Bermuda grass, along with the uh, with zoysia grass, is it runs on rhizomes and stolons. And a stolon looks similar to this. Stolons are they run along the surface of the ground, and that's how I remember this. It's a stolon and it's a stem. And so it runs along the surface of the ground, runs off, runs off of the stem. So riser root, stolen stem, it's an easy way to remember. Um, but you can see at each different place, leaf node, where you've got a, a blade of grass coming, that is where you're going to have a new plant start. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with this with Bermuda grass. Um, you've seen this running along in your flower beds a hundred times, but what you don't see is underground, the riser is doing the same thing. So you may, you may eradicate the stuff on the surface, but just see a piece of grass poke up, you know, a few feet um, inside your flower bed, you may have sprayed the surface, but it's that rhizome that's shooting the grass up from underneath. Um, so, sorry about the branching off of the zoysia grass topic, but we'll get back to zoysia. It is a thicker bladed grass. Warm season grass that cannot be seeded is St. Augustine. Um, so, next what we'll talk about is... Um, We'll talk about bahia grass, and I'm just going to touch briefly on bahia grass. Bahia grass is it has a woody rhizome, so it's a woody root, and you'll see this growing a lot of times in your yard as a weed. But uh, most of most of the time, you'll see this growing uh, between highways and to retain uh, soil and ditches and uh, things like that, um, overpasses, different things where they're trying to retain retain the sand or the soil. And uh, so that's that's pretty much it for warm season grasses. Like I said, I didn't go over everything because I didn't plan on doing it this way. I plan on using my notes for this. Um, so there's certain things I'm going to miss on touching uh, or miss touching on with these grasses. Um, the next grass I'm going to talk about is a cool season grass. There are two cool season grasses that are typically grown in this area. Uh, one is tall fescue and the other being uh, rye grass. Uh, tall fescue is what you'll find predominantly as a year round lawn. Um, in some areas, it's, it's not very common in this area because of the high heat and the sand in this area. Um, it is it is a, a cool season grass, so it likes to be planted in the fall months. You can have limited success planting it in the spring um, if you don't have sandy soil. If you have sandy soil, it is, it's almost impossible to get a good, uh, a good um, set with tall fescue in the summertime or the springtime. So the appropriate time is the fall to plant your fescue. And fescue does not run on rhizomes and stolons as your warm season grasses do. Fescue is a bunch grass, so it is where you put the seed is where that grass is going to grow. So if you have damaged areas or if you have bared spots in the yard, you're going to want to uh, you're going to have to reseed that every year. Um, and it also has a high fertilization requirement. So with those two things, uh, it is going to be a high maintenance grass for you because you're going to have to reseed it and do different things throughout the year. Um, that are just, just going to be a lot of maintenance for you. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is ryegrass. A lot of people will overseed their warm season grasses uh, with ryegrass in the wintertime. The allelopathic method, thank you, the allelopathic, which puts out a herbicide, a natural herbicide, into the, um, into the soil from the roots. And it actually causes a dieback in most of your most of your lawns. Bermuda grass. If you're gonna oversee with rye grass, Bermuda grass is the only one that you can um, you can get away with it. It's still not recommended because of the natural herbicide that it puts out. But Bermuda of all the warm season grasses is the most tolerant of that herbicide. Um, that's pretty much it that I was going to talk about today. I know I've missed a few things, but the slide presentation will be available for you in the I believe it's in the in the description of the uh, of the program, and um, check my notes here. So uh, tomorrow's class will be time management while working at home by Cameron Lowe, who is our uh, Currituck County Extension Director. Thank you very much. No, I